Hello, this is a Julius Foerich upright piano made in 1924, 125 cm tall, and we're moving it from A to B and assess assessing it on the way. The client wants it stored for a short time too. Um, I'm just thrilled to get this piano in because it's one of our favourite, the Julius Foerich of 1924, similar to Grotrian Steinberg of the same sort of age, but many more Grotrians, not very many Foerichs in the UK. And the depth of tone on it, if you're a tuner, you really appreciate that. They're made really with no holes barred to make it as good a piano as possible. You can even see the quality of the hinges here. Um, just everything's done to really tremendously high standards. There is a slight chip on the key here, uh, which we have to make good and try to hide as much as we can. I think we can manage to do that. The keys need buffing as well. And the casework is in extremely good condition. It does need making good, and there's a couple of repairs down on the toes here, for instance. This is typical. Um, we either re-veneer them completely or just try and make good and fill the holes. So that, that, sorry, fill the missing bits of veneer, which is what we would normally do. If it was a stock piano, I think we'd do that, because if most of it's still there, you can see the rest of the, um, the, the front here. Again, we need to make this good, really. It doesn't need repolishing, or well, at least if it was a stock piano, we wouldn't repolish it. Obviously, anything can be done, but uh, in terms of economics, it's quite expensive to repolish, especially when it looks so... Uh, it's so integral, there's no fading, there's no difference in colour here. If I push the lid down, it's almost the same colour, perhaps slightly darker there, but um, really in very, very good condition. And the back of the piano also is extremely good. There's no woodworm, no moth. Uh, we checked it for that, as you see on the checklist that we use nowadays, just to make sure we don't forget anything. Sorry, it's a bit dark back here. I just put the flash on so you can see the typical gauze on high quality pianos. Uh, I checked it for moth as well as woodworm. Uh, you, when this felt is eaten at the back there, it's a sure sign you've probably got got felt uh, moth eaten underneath the keys as well. But this is, has a clean bill of health. Now, there's plenty of leg room here. I think about two centimetres more. We'll see the worksheet in a minute. And pedals very low and sloped. We've talked about that before. So very well designed. Now the screws here are a bit loose on the music stand and also I would tend to put book holders on if you're a musician, you probably want them or you could put cat's clips on but I think with this one book holders would fit fine because there's plenty of thickness on it. Now the action is in generally good condition but we have to make a decision here. Uh, the hammers are quite soft. If we compare that with a knight say, this is a knight which as you know is one of our preferred makes um, and that sort of medium tone, slightly mellow as well, but very pleasant. Has a tremendous depth of tone, but it's very mellow, and that's because the hammers are indented, and too much, would you go up here, too much uh, area of the hammer hitting the string, so it's making it quite a dead sound, as you can hear that. It's hardly, hardly making a good tone at all, so they need at least refacing. If this was a stock piano, one of our own, I think we would reface it rather than replace the hammer, just for economical reasons. Though we have fully restored a Foric, a very, very similar piano. And in fact, there's a testimonial on a website because it was bought by a practicing musician. So uh, he was really pleased. But it also, if you want to get the weight, I think he was anyway, if you want to get the weight back, um, as we'll look at in a second, that the, the key weighting is far too light. Um, we'll look at that on the checklist, but I'll just show you middle C, for instance. And middle C is 41 grams down weight, which is far too low if you want it as a serious musician. So replacing the hammers would be the first thing to do if you want to get the touch back to normal, and then uh, you would probably think about doing other work as well. So it's a decision to make. Um, as I say, I think we would possibly reface the hammers, but then we'd have to weight the keys to get it to the kind of weight that we would want, because we're always trying to make a piano feel like a modern piano. It is better to change the hammers, uh, but obviously that's very costly, and the piano ends up being a lot more expensive if we were selling it. The tuning pins are very tight, by the way. We, I should have mentioned that's the first thing to check, so that's good news. And it was at concert pitch um, when we've got it. I think it has been tuned regularly. It's made in Leipzig, same place as Blutner, and there's obviously an influence of Blutner here, and certainly as good a piano. Down in the tenor area, it really bites, just like a very similar to Grotrian Steinbeck. The bass is slightly 
tubby here. It would be worth trying to turn the bass strings to get a bit more life into them. If you replace the bass strings, that would obviously make them more lively, but you may lose, lose some of the original tone. Uh, the Grotrins we get quite often, if they've been restrung, you've lost some of the original tone. It's a very hard decision to make. If the tuning pins are loose, then you would change the bass strings normally. Well, change all the strings, just restring the piano. Uh, so it can be fully restored and makes into a tremendously special piano as well. So that's a decision to make. Uh, you'd lose some of the originality, but you would, obviously, you, you want to get the touch as good as, as perfect as possible. So. Uh, changing the hammers is the first thing to do there. But if you don't change the hammers, then you've got to wait the keys. So here's the worksheet we've made of the piano. Um, so the key weighting is the main issue here, I think, uh, and the tam hammer tone. Uh, so, the f well, that, let's look at this first of all. 41, 43, 42. It really needs to be f certainly 47 to 52, that kind of range. Um, and all of them need to be in that range, really. So they're generally far too light. It's to do with the hammers, to do with the fact that the, the action is uh, obviously loosened up as well. So there's some of the work that we need to do. Um, so replace or replace the hammers, that's the debatable thing. Um, uh, turn the bottom bass strings, possibly. The set-offs I didn't show you, but most of the regulation is good, but we want to just uh, fine regulate it as well. There's a bit of beading left on the, missing on the, or rather damaged at the top, so just little bits of the casework too. And the echo, I didn't mention this, but if you play around here, you can hear echo, and that's because of some of the bass dampers, uh, not as strong as they could be, uh, but they are functioning well. It's just a slight echo you get as a result of that. Uh, that will still be there, I think, if you change them as well, but be much better. It's been in the family since 1939, which is uh, nice to hear. So not wasn't very uh, old when it was bought originally for, by this family. A beautiful full tone. Yes, right, so we need to think about what to do there. Um, so just a few other things that they're doing. And I say book holders would be a great idea or cat's clips, which you see on our website. But I think book holders would suit this piano very well. So that's a Julius Feurig upright piano, made in 1924, coming for assessment while it's in our storage area. I've been in the family since 1939 and I suspect only been regulated um, and not really worked on at all apart from that. But it's in very good condition. It's, I didn't mention, but many of the adjustments are almost perfect. So that's encouraging. It's a little bit of uh, fine regulation, but the main thing is the touch. It's far too light if you want to use it as a musician's piano. If you just want to enjoy the piano, obviously you might like a light action. And it's very mellow. Again, if we reface it, it'll brighten up, so it'll change the sound of the piano. Um, you might like it very well, though, in which case we'll even the tone out. But the touch is something we'd have to work on. So either we reweight the keyboard, which is possible, or we change the hammers and then reweight the keyboard, which I think we would prefer if we were to do a, a top job, really. Uh, obviously, that's more expensive, a lot more expensive. This is a wonderful piano, and we get quite a few Grotrian Steinbeck upright pianos that are similar, but very. This, I think this is the second Feurig that we've seen, apart from the one I mentioned earlier that we sold, uh, but probably about 15 years ago that was, or a long time ago, or certainly 10 years ago. Just has a, such a beautiful clarity of tone. change the bass strings but I would think we can possibly turn them or just uh, actually refacing the hammers will make a difference because the hammers are not bringing out the tone as they could be.
Yeah, yeah. Viola for it. Um, a for it would be wonderful. Any top quality piano that you would like moved from A to B and you'd like us to assess it while it's in transit, that's something we would be very happy to do. Thank you very much for listening.